Shemuel Bet, Chapter 21 And there was a scarcity of food in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David sought the face of Yahweh, and Yahweh answered, Because of Shaul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Givenites, the sovereign therefore called the Givenites and spoke to them. Now the Givenites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Shaul had sought to strike them in his ardor for the children of Israel and Yehuda. So David said to the Givenites, What should I do for you? And with what do I make atonement, so that you bless the inheritance of Yahweh? And the Givenites said to him, It is no matter of silver or gold between us and Shaul, or his house, neither is it for us to put to death any man in Israel. And he said, Whatever you say, I do for you. And they said to the sovereign, The man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in all the border of Israel, let seven men of his sons be given to us, and we shall hang them before Yahweh in Giva of Shaul, whom Yahweh chose. And the sovereign said, I give them. But the sovereign spared Mephibosheth, son of Jehonathan, son of Shaul, because of the oath of Yahweh that was between them, between David and Jehonathan, son of Shaul. And the sovereign took the two sons of Ritzpah, the daughter of Aya, whom she bore to Shaul, Armoni and the other Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Shaul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Mecholatite, and gave them into the hands of the Givenites, and they hanged them on the hill before Yahweh. So the seven fell together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. And Ritzpah, the daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock, from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from the heavens. And she did not allow the birds of the heavens to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. And David was informed what Ritzpah, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Shaul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Shaul, and the bones of Jehonathan his son, from the men of Yavesh Gilad, who had stolen them from the street of Beit Shan, where the Philistines had hung them up, after the Philistines had struck down Shaul in Gilboa. And he brought up the bones of Shaul, and the bones of Jehonathan his son, from there. And they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged, and buried the bones of Shaul and Jehonathan his son, in the land of Binyamin in Tela, in the burial site of Kish his father, and did all that the sovereign commanded. And after that Elohim heard prayer for the land. And the Philistines were again fighting against Israel, so David and his servants with him went down and fought against the Philistines. And David was weary, and Yishbo Benov, who was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose bronze spear was three hundred pieces, who was bearing a new sword, spoke of striking David. But Avishai son of Teruah came to help him, and struck the Philistine, and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Do not go out with us to battle any more, lest you put out the lamp of Israel. And it came to be afterward that there was a battle again with the Philistines at Gov. Then Sibichai the Hushatite struck Saf, who was one of the sons of the giant. And there was a battle with the Philistines again at Gov, where Elchanan son of Ya'arei Oregim the Beit Lechemite struck Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was a battle in Gath again, where there was a man of great height, who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also was descended from the giants. And he reproached Yisrael, and Jehonathan son of Shimi, the brother of David, struck him. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants.